In this video I will show you how to make the ultimate grid based building system in Unity 3D. It's going to be easy to develop with little code because we will be using built in Unity features. Also it's going to be super scalable because all of the calculations will be automatic no matter what the size of the grid or the size of the building is. Interested? Continue watching. Hey, hey, it's Tamara here, and I'm bringing you a new grid building system for 3D games. The system we're going to develop is perfect for 3D games which use a 2.5D perspective, especially isometric games which we will be using today. But of course it can also be used in top-down games too, and frankly it can be used in any perspective. You would just need to reposition the camera. Yeah, that's how good this system is. First things first, how this system actually works. I have developed a few more versions of this system before for 2D games, and the principle for this remains unchanged. We have a grid and one tile map which you will use to keep track of the available area. If a tile is painted, it is taken. If a tile is empty, it means that it is available to place on. In addition to that, we have a prefab of a building. It has a defined size measured in tiles like 2 to 3 or 4 to 6, etc. When you want to place an object onto the map, the system checks if the area under it is clear and if it's true, we can place it. After the placement, the system will paint our tile map with tiles to indicate that the area is now taken by the house. To make this system work, we need to create a tile map in a 3D project. If you don't know that it's possible, please check out my video on the topic of Unity tile maps and 3D projects. I also include a brief instruction on how to set up a 3D tile map in this video. So before getting into development, let's talk about the things you have to know in order to make this system. As promised, it is easy and you won't need to write tons of code. This video alone can get you what you want. But if you're a beginner, and I know that some people who watch me are beginners, this is what you should do. Install the Unity tile map package to get access to all tile maps. Know how to create a tile map and resize cells in it. Know how to create a tile palette, a tile, and how to paint with tiles on the tile map. All of this information is available in my video about Unity tile maps, which you can watch on my channel. In addition, you can read about tile maps in Unity Scripting API if you find something challenging to understand. I will be mostly explaining methods we will be using in this video, but the knowledge of tile map methods can give you the possibilities for using this system. Now, when you have everything you need, let's get to coding. And just a reminder that all the source code and project files will be available on my Patreon page if you want to skip pausing and rewriting code from the video. I created a 3D project and imported the packages and assets. Also, I created a plane to indicate the ground and rotated the camera to an isometric perspective. You can find more information on isometric perspective in my playlist about making such games in Unity. Let's start with the basics. Click on the hierarchy, create, 2D, tile map, and select rectangular. We can see that we have a tile map in the scene, but it is rotated the wrong way. To set things right, go to the grid object, find the cell swizzle, and set it to X, Z, Y. Then go to the tile map object, find the tile map component, and set the orientation to X, Z. We can use it just like in 2D and paint flat tiles on it. To get rid of the glitching effect, you can lift the grid object just a little bit. Now, let's create prefabs for our buildings. To make a prefab, I recommend creating an empty object and dragging the model as a child of it. I chose this long building to illustrate the rotations later on in this tutorial. Then open a prefab, make sure that the model is centered. Then add a box collider to the prefab and scale it to cover the whole object. This collider will be responsible for dragging the object, detecting the area, and of course for collisions. I created one more prefab the same way. Now let's create a few scripts. We will only need three of these. Building system, placeable object, and object drag. Open them in the editor. First of all, we will be making a grid snapping. In the building system script, create a static field current to implement a single tone. Then create a public field grid layout. I made it public because we will be accessing it from other scripts. Then a private field for grid. After that, create a serialized field for the main tile map. It will be initialized in the editor. Also, create a tile base for a white tile, which will be used for indication of the taken area. 
After that, I created two game object fields for the prefabs that I made. Create a field for the placeable object called Object to Place. Now let's move on to the methods. Create a region for Unity methods. Create the method awake. In it, initialize the current field with this and get the grid from the grid layout. After this region, create another one called utils. In it, create a method getMouseWorldPosition which returns a vector 3. We will be using raycasting to get the world point. This is a recommended way of an input in 3D games. First, create a ray by calling the screen point to ray method on the main camera and passing the mouse position. Write an if statement and call physics raycast. Pass the ray and out raycast hit. In the if, return raycast hit point. Otherwise, return vector 30. Then create another method snap coordinate to grid, which also returns a vector 3 and accepts a vector 3 position. First, get a vector 3 in cell position by calling the grid layout world to cell on the pass position. Next, initialize the position with the value that grid get cell center world returns from a cell position. Return the position. Now, head to the object drag script. Create a vector 3 field offset. It will be used to save the distance between your click position and the center of an object to avoid any jumping. Create a method on mouse down and save the difference between transform position and mouse world position which we get from the grid building system. Create a method on mouse drag. In it, calculate the position of the mouse with the offset you saved. Then initialize the transform position with the snapped position. We need to create a way for us to get the object onto the map. In the script building system create a region called building placement. In it, create a method initialize with the object. It will accept a game object prefab. You can also pass the position where you want your object to be instantiated. First, snap the position you want to get your object at. I'm going to be using a vector 3.0 for that. Save the position in a variable. Instantiate an object from the past prefab on the position we calculated and save it. Then get the placeable object component from the object and save it in the field object to place. Add an object drag component to this object. You can call this method from a button or as we will do in this tutorial from a key on the keyboard. Go to the region Unity methods and create the method update. In it, detect if the A key was pressed, call method initialize with object and pass our first prefab. Also, create an else if for the second prefab. Just duplicate this block of code and replace A with B and pass the second prefab. Now, go back to the editor and test grid snapping. Add a building system script to the grid object. Initialize the fields. Grid layout with the grid object. The main tile map is the only one in the scene. And also white tile and your prefabs. Also, don't forget to add placeable object components to both prefabs. Now hit play mode and we can see that everything works. The next thing we would have to do is make sure we can place a building. To do so, we first need to calculate its size measured in tiles and then check if this area is available on the spot that the object is standing on. And calculating the size is an interesting part, so let me explain it to you. We have a box collider that we created earlier. We need to get the corner positions of the bottom square. To do so, we get the center of the collider and add to it half of the size of the collider to get the position. To get all corners, we just need to change the direction in which we're adding the distance. For example, to get this corner, we need to subtract half of the Y coordinate of the collider size, add half of the Z coordinate and subtract half of the X coordinate. This will result in a local position of the vertex. But at this point, we don't care if it is in local space or in the world space. Once we've calculated all the vertices, we convert them to tile positions on the grid. We take one corner and calculate the difference between its positions and the positions of its neighboring vertices. This will get us a size which is less than the actual size by one tile on each axis. In the object we will store it like that, but when we need to check the area for availability we will add it back. And now we just have to do everything in code. Open the script placeable object. Create a public bool placed with a private set. Create a public vector 3 int with a private set too. Then create a private array of vector 3s called vertices. After that, let's get to methods. Create a method called get collider vertex positions local. In it, get the collider component of our object.
then initialize the vertices array. We will need four elements. Then calculate their positions. Pay attention here to not miss any minuses because it might get you bugs. After you're done, create another method called calculate size in cells. First of all, create an array of vector 3 ints with the same size as our vertices array. In a loop, convert each vertex to a world position using the transform point and the object transform. After this, convert it to a cell coordinate and save it into the array. After this, calculate the size. Neighboring indexes for 0 are 1 and 3. Subtract from the element 0, element 1 and get the x coordinate. Subtract from the element 0, element 3 and get the y. As a z coordinate, pass 1. To paint tiles in the tilemap, we will pass the starting tile position. I want to create a method to get that position in world space. This method will take just the first element of the vertices array and convert it to a world point. Now create a start method. In it, called methods get vertex positions local and calculate size in cells. After this, create a virtual method place. I won't be overriding it here, but in your game you might need to. For example, if you have a building that has to start a building timer and a decoration that doesn't do anything. In it, get the component object rack and destroy it. Set the bool place to true. Also, this is the place to invoke any events connected to building placement if you need to. Go to the building system script and create a method getTilesBlock which returns a tile base array and accepts a bouncing area and tile map. Unity tilemaps already have a method like this, but I have acquired some issues with it, and by issues I mean my editor crashed, so it's better to write it yourself. First, create an array with the size of an area. For this, multiply the sizes on all axes. Then create an encounter and initialize it with a zero. In a for each loop, go through all positions within the area, get the tiles on them one by one and save them into an array. Increase counter. After the loop, return the array. Now go to the building placement region and create a method can be placed, which returns a bool and accepts a placeable object. In it, create a bouncing area. Set the position of the area to the object store position, which we will get by calling a method we created. I accidentally made it private, so I had to go back and change it to public. And then convert it to a cell position. We also get the size from this object and add 1 to each coordinate, which I forgot to do at this point. After this, get the tile base array with the method we wrote before. Pass the area and the main tile map. Then go through each tile in the array and check if it is white. If yes, this means that at least one tile is taken and we cannot place here. Return false in this case. After the loop, return true. We have to create another method called takeArea. It will accept a vector3 in start and vector3 size. In it, call the method fillbox on the main tile map, pass start y tile, start x and y coordinates, start x plus size x, and also start y plus size y. If you have worked this tile map before, you might have used the tool called box fill. This method works exactly like that. If you haven't used it, go to the editor and check it out for better understanding. Before we get to testing, go to the update method and write an if to check if we don't have an object to place. If it is null, return. After this, write an if to check for space key input. Check if we can place. If yes, call method place on the object to place. Calculate the star by converting the object's star position to world space. Call method take area and pass the start point and the size of the object. If the method can be placed returns false, destroy the object. And I also wrote an if to cancel the placement. Now we can go back to the editor and test. Before this, paint a border of tiles around your building area. This will increase the tile map bounds and ensure that the method box field works correctly. Now everything works and we can move on. One last thing that I want to implement today is rotations. It's quite simple. When we rotate an object, the order of our vertices changes. It actually shifts depending on the direction of the rotation. We're going to be rotating clockwise, so I'll be showing it in this video. Also, the size of our object will change too. It will just swap x and y coordinates. 
Open the placeable object script. Create a public method rotate. First, call the rotate method on the transform and pass the vector 3 to rotate the object by 90 degrees on the y axis. After this, change the size of the object. Create a new array of vertices. In a loop, go through each element of the new array and initialize it with an element of the old array. As an index, we take the mod of the current index plus 1 and the length of the vertices array. This will shift the array. After the loop, assign a new vertices array. Then go to the building system script and provide an input option for the user. I wrote an if to check for the key return and then call the method rotate. Go back to the editor and check if everything works. We have an object instantiation, grid snapping, rotations and of course placement. This system will work even if you rotate a camera to a top-down view, for example. As you can see, all the functions are working correctly. You can do some adjustments to the system to make it fit your game. In my video about a grid building system in 2D, I featured coloring tiles under the building as it moves. The approach I use there can be easily implemented in this system as well. And if you're wondering how to allow the player to edit the map, you can check out my Making Heyday series, the building system episode. In the same series you can also find a timer tutorial, because, you know, buildings take time to get built. Anyway, let me know in the comments in what game you would be using your system. And that's it for this video, thank you for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also, check out my Discord server where you can chat with me and other game devs. I'd like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and welcome Chetzada Thipsina, Alan Begovic, Emmy, Mechaman, Neil John Faldonia, Alex Deep, Vikram Tevaraj and Veri Sutha. See you in the next video! Bye!